Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane and before we get into the video I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's watched, comment, and liked the videos and a special thanks to those who have subscribed to the channel. I really do appreciate it. Over 220, I think it's about 225 subscribers now. The channel is growing beyond my expectations. So really appreciate those who have come along and, and decided to join along on this journey uh, on this channel. Well, if you're stopping by for the first time, we focus on a passive investing strategy by buying stocks in good companies that pay dividends. It's not rocket science. In my opinion, the best way to do anything is keep it as simple as possible. Really boils down to consistently investing, buying dividend growth stocks in growing companies with positive cash flow that covers the dividend and companies with a high return on their invested capital. I utilize both a dollar cost average approach, consistently investing into the stocks within the portfolio on a minimum of a bi-weekly basis. Usually it's every week, but I do get paid bi-weekly. Uh, I also do large purchases if I have extra funds from a bonus or a side job, something like that. I cover all my investments, sales, buys, reinvestments uh, in this portfolio every week. That's what this uh, particular video is about every Sunday. I don't have a paid Patreon. I don't ever intend to have one. We all have enough to pay for, so it's free to see what I'm doing in this portfolio, what I'm adding, what I'm selling, uh, what I'm reallocating funds to. Uh, so no subscriptions there to see anything with what's going on. Uh, but I do have a Weeble link down below if you're interested in opening your own Weeble brokerage account and uh, starting your own journey or adding another brokerage account to yours. And if you use the link Obviously, I'll get some free stocks. You will get some free stocks as well. Depends on what um, particular promotion they have going on at the time. Don't have to use that. Obviously, that's completely up to you. Completely discretionary. Sorry about that. That's my uh, my dogs in the background there barking. Uh, so check out the link if you want to. Got a lot to look at today. I did sell out of a significant amount of the portfolio this uh, this particular week. I do have some bills coming up, my uh, fall taxes. We've actually removed our taxes from our mortgage, so we pay that ourselves. Uh, so I had to get some funds for that. And then I think I mentioned that we are adding a pool in the back. Uh, and unfortunately, with the increase in cost inflation, we've incurred some additional costs that we weren't necessarily counting on when we first signed up for this, as well as a, a fence we had to add per the codes in our uh, municipality with a lock and gate that we didn't have previously. So it's added some costs there that I had to get some funds rounded up for that I wasn't necessarily accounted for this year. So unfortunately we did have to sell out and I am raising a little bit of cash right now too. So you'll see a lot of uh, what I sold out of is significantly in the green. As you saw at the end of the week, there was a big downturn. I think we're still in a uh, bull market and this recent rally was a, a dead cat bounce, a, a bear market rally. So I, I don't mind taking a little bit off the table, putting a little bit of cash aside, and then jump into some of these positions, hopefully at cheaper prices. You can't time the market, but uh, there is there are ways to play. If you know PEs get extremely high and, and positions, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 percent, you'll see some of them are 50, 60 percent uh, in the green. Might be time to take a little bit of profit. And like I said, with me needing some funds, it was the best time to do it. So let's jump right in. I did add, as you can see, and probably should have just reallocated funds instead of adding with me selling out of positions. Didn't make much sense, but I did this early in the week. So I did add $819. I did reallocate $2,353. And again, I sold out of a, a lot of the portfolio. So you'll see that here. Let's jump in. Uh, this is where I would cover dividend reinvested. <clears throat> Excuse me, there were no dividends paid out this week. So nothing to really cover on this one and then as I stated I did sell out quite a few positions uh, completely actually uh, and as you can see Apple was one I was up 25.8 percent and really if I didn't need uh, the funds for like I said my my fall taxes and, and I, I live on the water so I pay pretty high taxes so my all full discretion my tax bill is over 17,000 for the uh, for the fall taxes and then it'll be another I think 10 for the spring taxes. So we pay really high taxes uh, living on the water where we do. Uh, I honestly, if I had my way and my wife uh, picked this particular spot because it was close to where she was working downtown Detroit at the time, now we're from home. And if I had my way and the market wasn't so crazy, the price is out of control, we'd probably sell this place and go, we'll go find somewhere else uh, out in the country. But that's a story for another day. 
but as you can see, uh, most everything I sold out of was significantly in the green. Again, Apple was up 25.8%, Bristol Myers Squibb, 22 share, and 20 shares of Apple there I had 20.027, so I sold out of that 25 point, uh, and, and it, typically I would just take the 681 off the table, right? Say I'm up quite a bit, let's just take these profits off the table and that what number in the green is what I would do. But we, we basically recouped all this 3,300. Bristol Myers Squibb was another one with 22.667 shares. And that was up 13.66%. Colgate Palmolive wasn't up a lot, 2.42. That was one I just had not been adding to. The PE is pretty high on it. So I was comfortable there. Apple, I'd look to get back in at some point. Bristol Myers Squibb, same thing. Uh, CVS, I really love this company. I was up 21% here. Uh, 30 shares. I'd, I'm probably going to look to get back into this one down in the 80s. You know, when it drops back into the 80s, that's why I jumped into the into it in high 70s. So I'd love it to pull back again to the 80s and then jump back in. Chevron was when I was up significantly. I bought this uh, early last year, 57.64%. So not only had I not been adding to it, 18.911 shares, but I'm up so much that it just made sense. Uh, like I said, typically I would just take 1131 off the table, but it was just so high. I know this is one that uh, Buffett's been adding to recently, which I just think the the valuations are pretty high on it myself. But if it dropped back down into the you know low 130s, maybe maybe it'd be you know, something I'd take a look at again. Dominion Energy, another one that I really like, but had run out uh, ahead of itself, 15.05% up there. I only had 12.51. So a lot of these are also positions I have not been adding to. Chevron hadn't been added to in a while. Colgate hadn't been added to at all. General Dynamics is another one up 16.39%. So we took that one off the table, only had five shares, another one that I hadn't been adding to at all. General Mills had run way up 35.70. And for a company that's not fast growing, 35% uh, increase and another one that I really wasn't adding to with 23 shares there. Well, we weren't done. We continued to sell out of positions within the portfolio. Huntington Ingalls, this is another one I really like. If it dropped back into the uh, 190s, right? So you, so you can see my cost basis here as well and if you want to go back to the previous slide you you can stop this and go see all my cost bases and where i would be interested in jumping back in them uh 190s again was in this so i'm up 24 percent so definitely worth uh, pulling it off the table eight shares wasn't adding to it there coca-cola another slow grower but i was up 14 percent on this one so it's not always about uh how fast a company is growing it's definitely where you buy them i mean i was into this at 55 uh, 51 that ran up to 63 so again up 14 percent comfortable taking off there it wasn't adding anything there but if it dropped back down into the low 50s i would be interested again ibm another one a slow grower uh, they did a spin-off here last year which is part of the reason i got in not up a, a ton 6.44 this is a great income play as well high dividend yield had 27 shares but another one i had not been adding to uh, at all lockheed martin was another one that ran up significantly i was in this one at 344 so IBM, again, down in the 120s, I'd be interested again. It's up in the 130s now, even with the pullbacks on the day. A lot of these had pulled back on the day, too. So if, if I could time the market, I obviously wouldn't have done it on a day that uh, that most of these had pulled back out of bottom when they were even higher in the green. Lockheed Martin, like I said, six years there. One I was not adding to. I was adding to this in the uh, $344 range. It's up to 432 so not interested in adding to it at those prices. But if it pulled back... Closer to 344, I definitely would be. I was up 25% there. Now, Lumen Technologies is one. Uh, I had 146 shares here, and I was thinking about just selling some uh, some puts or some covered calls on this one, but um, because I have over 100 shares, and you can do that, uh, so down 13.05%. But this is one I really bought into as a turnaround play. I'm in it at 1247. It's dropped down to 1083, and has been right around the nine to eleven dollar range for a while. So I, I just wasn't interested in actually continuing to add and, and bring down the cost basis, which I would, you'll see in my other positions that I kept in the portfolio, primarily are all down. And I'm just looking to add to and bring down the cost basis. And then as they turn around, you know, hopefully see these 25, you know, percent increases, 28, 30, 67 down here, right? Next era energy is another one that I really like the company. If it pulled back to the, the low 70s, high 60s, I'd be interested in jumping back in this one. But I was up 21%, 24 shares, had not been adding, so took that one off the table as well. Pfizer, another one I bought early last year as we got into the uh, pandemic, 24.93. And then obviously with the pandemic, this thing started running up. 
I was into it around 36, uh, 42 per share. I think I actually started around buying it around 30 and, and bought up into to 36, 24.93 shares there. And if it dropped back in here, I probably would be interested in jumping into Pfizer, but I think it's going to remain elevated for a while because of the COVID stuff that they've got going right now. Uh, and that's all priced into this 28.63% increase in price. U.S. Bancorp was actually on my August watch list, a company I really like. I even like them at these prices. It's currently below my cost basis, uh, 49.40, 46.78, uh, 82 shares. So I was getting close to 100 shares, but again, I needed the funds. So 38.43, not one of my higher conviction plays, just one that I had been adding to to bring down the cost basis. So this one right here, if you're interested in a, a bank play that, in my opinion, is actually undervalued, this one would be a play I would, I would jump back in if I... Uh, if I was added into the financial sector. And you'll see part of the reason why I was comfortable pulling this off. Financials has become a big part of mine with the reallocation uh, or the re, uh, reorganization of the portfolio, let me say. And then Exxon Mobil, similar to Chevron, was another one that had run up significantly, up 63.71%. I mean, I was in this at $60.06 per share. It's run up to 98 be honest, uh, doing a, I recently did a, a cost analysis on this one here. If it ran into the high 70s, I might jump back into this one because I just got in it real cheap, right? Chevron and ExxonMobil were ones that I really got into cheap. Again, haven't been adding to you know, the position, 33.42 shares, and probably wouldn't have added. I mean, up 63%, it's hard to justify adding to these. I think I talked about it on a recent video that I was thinking about turning off the drip because some of these have run up, right? 28, 21, 25, 14, 24, 63%. When these run up so much, I, I don't even like to see the drip go back into them because you're buying them at such elevated prices that it increases your cost basis, uh, really, and it's not worth it. I mean, you're getting such a small amount of shares, right? I haven't even bought a full share of this uh, over the last year that I've owned it. Whereas some of these positions, whenever they pull back, like US, USB, whenever I would get uh, dividends reinvested back there, it's bringing my cost basis down, right? So the drip actually kind of hurts you a little bit, in my opinion, whenever some of these run up so high. And again, if I didn't need the funds, I would probably just take, you know, the 1280 that I'm up and then reallocate it somewhere else. If, uh, if you're the type of person that does pull profit off the table at times, that's how I would do that. I would just pull, you know, whatever I'm up, the 539, the 218, the 241, the 392, 1280, I would pull those off. Then at least you've pulled the profit out of it and you're just playing with house money at that point and you could reallocate those funds elsewhere. So those are all the positions that I actually sold out of. And again, I did sell out of them fully. You'll see in the next couple of slides, uh, the funds that were, were, uh, were paid out from those again. So all the same companies, Lockheed Martin, IBM, General Mills, Huntington Ingalls, Bristol Myers Squibb, CVS, General Dynamics, Chevron, Apple, uh, from the sale of all those, it was $21,773.67. And then from the rest, Colgate, Palmolive, Dominion Energy, Exxon Mobil, US Bank Corp, Pfizer, Next Era Energy, Coca-Cola, and Lumens, another $15,709.69 for a total uh, out of the portfolio of $37,483.36. And we did, like I said, reallocate. So I still am adding two positions that remain in the portfolio. I added eight more shares of 3M company, ticker MM. This is in the industrial sector. And I mentioned, uh, I think, uh, either last week or the week before, whenever I did a stock, uh, stock pick of the day on this one, I think it was around 147 it had run back up but i like it under 130 and that's whenever it dropped under 130 i jumped in and grabbed uh, some more shares at 129 dollars and 58 cents eight more shares added to that position johnson and johnson is another one i want to build and i'm trying to get both of these over 100 shares i'm in the 50 to 60 range on each of them you'll see that as well here in a couple of slides out i'll show you my overall portfolio what's left in the portfolio anyway <laughs> And we also reallocated uh, $1,316 and picked up eight more shares of Johnson & Johnson, ticker J&J, &J, out of the healthcare sector. We picked those up for $164.55, which is below my cost basis, so that's why I wanted to add there. And then I mentioned we added $819.85 on the 22nd in new funds. Uh, really, uh, I should have waited and just did all of the transactions later in the week. Or, to be honest, if I'd have known uh, the market was going to drop like it did towards the end of the week, I'd have done all the sales 
in the beginning of the week and had a little bit more funds and I had to sell as much. Uh, but that's just, again, you can't time the market, just the way things work. So at the beginning of the uh, week, I'd added $819.85 to the portfolio. And with those funds, I picked up four shares of Lion Dobasso, ticker LYB, in the material sector at $88.11 per share. We picked up six shares of Stag Industrial. This is a REIT. This REITs have become a significant portion of my portfolio as well. You'll see that here in a minute. And ticker STAG for Stag Industrial, six shares at $33.18. And we added 10 shares of Enterprise Product Partners, ticker EPD, at $26.83. Really high yield here, Stag is as well, so is Lando Basso's all around a 5% dividend yield or greater. And this is where we currently sit. As I said, I sold out a significant chunk of the portion, uh, chunk of the portfolio overall. So the total value has dropped significantly. I think we were around 129,000 last week. Uh, we're down to $92,316.33, along with the decline in the overall price of the 37,000 taken out of the portfolio as well. The one thing it did do, it did raise the dividend yield up significantly because a lot of the positions left are higher yielding positions. Uh, I did take out, you know, Colgate is a, a slower growing, lower yielding company. Uh, you know, USB is another one, lower yielding. So a lot of what's left in the portfolio, REITs especially, are higher yielding. EPD, e Enbridge are all higher yielding too. So you'll see those in a minute. And obviously with that uh, reduction in the overall portfolio, the annual dividend income did take a hit by about $1,200 a year. So we're currently sitting at $4,765.92 in passive income. And if you don't pull out big chunks of your portfolio, this will continue to grow over time. Whether the market's up, down, or floating sideways, annual dividend income should increase as you add, as you reinvest the dividends if you have the drip set on, and as the companies within the portfolio increase their dividends over time. Now let's run quickly through the uh, sector allocations since they have changed significantly with the recent adjustments made in the portfolio. Communications is sitting at 10.03%. That's shot up. Consumer discretionary has actually gone up to 5.07%. Consumer staples down with the sale of General Mills and Coca-Cola dropped to 5.52%. We do have Procter & Gamble in there still, which is one I want to build out. So hopefully we can build the consumer staples because I really like this sector here in particular. Energy is at 5.38%. Another one I would like to build out, which dropped because of the sale of uh, ExxonMobil and Chevron, the sales of ExxonMobil and Chevron, I should say. Financials, as I mentioned, has become a significant portion, which is why I was comfortable pulling out USB, uh, United States Bank Corp there. It's 14.09% of the portfolio now with uh, Bank of America, Prudential Financial, and uh, Huntington Bank still in the portfolio. Healthcare sitting at 8.61. Uh, so that one's another one that's dropped down as I add to Johnson & Johnson. This should uh, creep back up a little bit. Industrials has dropped as well uh, with Lockheed Martin, Huntington Ingalls, General Dynamics, a lot of sales out of uh, the industrial sector as well. So that has dropped to 10.92%. Uh, technology is one that stayed about the same at 11.81%. Materials is up slightly uh, with Lion Obasso, uh, Vail, uh, Kinross Gold Corp, Sabaney Stillwater still in the portfolio. That has you know, remained a little elevated. I think it was around 6% before. Utilities, we don't have any utilities. So this is one I will probably look to try to find uh, some utility companies under uh, undervalued and add back into the portfolio over time here. Again, none of this is going to be quick. It'll be over you know, the next six months to a year that we'll rebuild out this portfolio and the positions we want to add as they pull back. And as I mentioned, REITs and real estate has really shot up to 18.79%, which is really more than I want allocated to any one sector. I would say you know, anything above 15% is probably getting a little heavy. So this is one I probably won't add a ton to, even though you'll see in the next slide that there is some opportunity to uh, dollar cost average and bring down uh, my cost basis in some of these positions. So I don't usually show this spreadsheet, but here's a, a snippet from the spreadsheet where I track all my dividends. Obviously, I've removed everything that I've sold. These are the positions. What I wanted you to really see are the positions that remain within the portfolio. So we're still uh, Bank of America, still a large port portion of the portfolio, right? We have uh, 
it's at 6.64. So you, see, let me go through here actually what we're looking at. So you've got the ticker, that would be the company, the current price. So I adjust this weekly as the, the market value, uh, the share average share co price cost, that's my cost basis, how much I've invested. So that's the money that I've actually paid for it, whether and if it's down or up, right? It's down $718, so it's down 10%. So whether you're positive or negative in the return, this, the sector that it's in, and then the dividends that it pays out, whether it's quarterly, monthly, semi-annual, right? I put the amount there and then it does the, the math here and gives me the, the current yield, yield on cost, the portfolio weighting. So Bank of America would be 6.64% of the overall portfolio. And I also have the estimated annual dividend income. That's where I pull the $4,765.92 that we saw before. So as you can see, Bank of America still in the portfolio, Cisco Systems, uh, Bank of America, ticker BAC, Cisco Systems, ticker CSCO, Enbridge is ticker EMB, uh, Enterprise Product Partners, ticker EPD, Huntington Bank, ticker HBAN, Intel, ticker INTC, Johnson & Johnson, uh, ticker J&J, &J, Kinross Gold Corp, uh, ticker KGC, Kraft Heinz Company, we, we left in the portfolio, ticker KHC, Leggett & Platt, ticker LEG, Lionel Basil Industries, ticker LYB, uh, 3M Company, ticker MMM. O is Realty Income, ticker O. Omega Healthcare Investors is a REIT in the uh, healthcare sector. They do uh, elderly care, <coughs> excuse me, ticker OHI. Procter & Gamble, again, that's one I wanna build out significantly. We're only sitting on you know, uh, $22 in, in dividend income there, so we wanna build that position out significantly in the uh, consumer uh, staple sector. Prudential, is a Prudential Financial, if you've seen them, I'm sure, on TV, ticker PRU. So Bainey Stillwater, uh, ticker SBSU, is in the material sector. This is a mining company here. Stag, another REIT, ticker STAG. Store, a REIT as well, ticker STOR. Uh, T is for uh, AT&T, ticker T. Uh, Union Pacific is a railroad in the industrial sector. We kept that. Another one that we don't have a huge position in, but would like to build that out, right? Only, only getting 21.07. Uh, dollars in, in dividend income here. Vale is another mining company out of Brazil, and it's actually, I think it's pronounced Vale, but uh, I, I just say Vale, ticker V-A-L-E, uh, the material sector, and Verizon Wireless, ticker V-Z. So, and then you can take a look if you guys want to pause this, like I said, see what the, the yield is that they're paying out. Most of these are higher yield, Verizon at 5.2, you know, Vale only pays once, a, once or twice a year but it is a 10% yielding stock. UNP is still on the low side at 2.25. You know, store is at 5.63. Uh, Stag at, at 4.58. Uh, Sabani Stillwater is another one that pays out semi-annually, but it's at 12.66. 4.87 for Prudential. Uh, Procter & Gamble is another low yielder, but I'm fine with that. I like the sector at 2.56, plus they just have a huge portfolio, right? I don't think they're going anywhere. Uh, Omega Healthcare Investors, 8.17. That's a play on the aging population, plus I like it for the income. 4.29% for uh, uh, realty income, ticker O. like the dividend yield there. Uh, to MMM, ticker uh, 3M there, 4.6 or 4.29%. No, I'm sorry, 4 point set is 4.62%. Uh, so that, they've shot up now that they've dropped back into the 1.9 or 129 range, below 130 per share. Lindo Basel, uh, 4.62. Leggett and Platt, 5.48. Or I'm sorry, Leggett and Platt is 4.52. 5.48 was Lindo Basel. Uh, 4.2 is Kraft Heinz Company, 3.58. Uh, Kinross Gold Corp, 2.75% yield for Johnson & Johnson. Huntington Banks is sitting at 4.43. 4.69 for enterprise products. No, 4.69. I'm sorry, Intel is at 4.43. Huntington Bank is at 4.69. 7% yield for enterprise product partners. 7.9% yield for Enbridge, you know, Cisco, 3.3, and Bank of America, 2.53. So as you can see, the overall dividend yield, like we saw on the previous slide, 5.163%. Yield on cost is 4.756. It's a little lower because as you can see here, the overall purchase of all these shares, uh, all these positions is 100,000, but again, we're down 7.87%.
that's the other downside of selling off the positions that were up. Obviously, with uh, those two not in the portfolio to offset the cost here, now we are in the red. But again, we can dollar cost average down, decrease uh, our cost basis in these here, and then increase our future returns. Well, that is really it. I know it was a little longer than normal, but there was a lot of activity. So I wanted to walk through that so you understood what was happening with the portfolio. And I hope uh, you guys didn't have to sell out anything in your portfolio and it's all ads for you. So let me know what you added to your portfolio this week, uh, how things looked. I know we ended the week uh, on a downturn. I think people are starting to realize the Fed's going to continue to raise rates. We are in a long uh, pullback, in my opinion, long bear market probably last at least through this year into next year, if not into 2024. But we will see how fast uh, they raise rates and how fast inflation comes down. Once we get inflation under control, then we might see things start to normalize and potentially uh, head back up. Obviously, there's always positions that are on the rise while other positions are pulling back. So look for those positions as they pull back. That's when you want to jump in. Decrease your dollar, uh, dollar or decrease your price per share amount, increase your future returns, continue to dollar cost average into the portfolio. I'll build this thing back out over the next uh, six months to a year and, and, and continue going forward. Hopefully I don't have to ever pull any money out again, but life happens. Uh, don't be afraid to adjust whenever you need to. That's just part of life. And that's the great thing about having a portfolio like this. You do have the option if you need to ever pull the money out, it's there, it's available. So that's another reason why I do this. It's money in the bank and hopefully returning uh, money to you every month, every quarter, every year in dividends. Well, as always, appreciate you stopping by. If you, done so, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit the thumbs up, ring that notification bell, subscribe to the channel, drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of the activity in the portfolio. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, suggestions for future topics, or constructive criticism down below. Drop it all in the comment section. This is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for stopping by. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion and investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can lose money. You should never invest any amount. Not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria, or seek the advice and counsel of a certified financial advisor.